Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart today. In the past day or so, we got rejected right in this level of resistance. So how low could we possibly go? Well, first of all, we have this level of support below us from about 62 down to 60,000 US dollars. And in the case that we lose that level of support, then the next level below that is from about 58,000 down to about 57,000 US dollars. However, there are also some bullish catalysts, like for example, this Hong Kong ETF approval, where they approved a Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF, which is very significant, especially for Ethereum. I'll get into that later in the video, but one thing that I did really want to share with you guys is what happened last time that an ETF was approved for Bitcoin. And I also shared this chart in my Discord server. So if you want to join that, then you can do it for free with the first link in the description down below. Either way, what we saw is we saw a rally up to the exact hour where the ETF started trading. And from that point, we saw about a 15.5% correction. Now, I'm not saying that exactly this needs to happen. However, I do want to have shared it with you guys so you're not like overly bullish coming into this ETF launch, expecting it to pump massively. And then as soon as everything starts trading, you start losing all your money, right? So I just wanted to have shared that with you guys. This is of course not financial advice. I'm simply telling you what I see in the charts and you can do with that information what you like. Now, looking back at this short term for Bitcoin here, let's say that we do get a bounce from of one of these levels here and we start trading back to the upside. Well, in that case, the first level of resistance we need to break is from about 65 and a half thousand all the way up to 66,000 US dollars. However, in the case that we do break that level of resistance, then the next level above that is from about 68.5K all the way up to 70,000 US dollars. So yeah, these are just some levels to look out for in the short term. And also taking a look at this triangle pattern right here, of course, we saw this breakout to the downside and now we got rejected from this level of support now turned into resistance. So I do think we should expect to see some lower price action here, for example, from about 62 down to $60,000, like I said. And also the current active price target is all the way down to about 58,000 US dollars. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. Like if you're going long here, do know that this price target is currently active. Now, just because there's a technical price target at a certain level doesn't mean that it has to be completely reached. Like for example, we got pretty close here. However, until it is reached, it is still technically active unless the pattern gets invalidated, which would be right here at about 67,000 US dollars because this is where the breakout actually started. So in the case that the price action moves back above the point of the breakout, then the pattern is invalidated and we can cross off this price target. Now also taking a look at the four hour RSI momentum indicator for Bitcoin, you can see that we reached oversold territories, which is whenever the RSI reaches a level below 30. And usually when that happens, there is limited room to the downside. So the RSI first needs to reset a little bit to around this 50 level. And the way it does that is either by the price just trading sideways or the price getting a little bit of bullish momentum. And this is exactly what we saw in the charts here. So we saw a little bit of bullish momentum here. And then once the RSI reset, as you can see right here, now we have more room to the downside once again. So this may be something that we need to look out for in the short term here. For example, if we get more bearish news like Israel uh, retaliating to the Iran attack uh, from yesterday, something like that could definitely be a bearish catalyst to complete this bearish price target. Now taking a look at the one week Bitcoin liquidation heat map, the signal's pretty clear here. We got a lot of liquidity to the upside at about 71.5K. So we have about $1.5 billion worth of people that are shorting the Bitcoin price that would lose their money on their trade if we reach this price level. And of course, as you know, if you watch my videos regularly, typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there's most liquidity on this chart. And even zooming out on the one month Bitcoin liquidation heat map, what we can see right here is that most of the liquidity is to the upside again at about 73,000 US dollars. And in this massive move to the downside that we saw over the last couple of days, we took out a lot of liquidity right here. So there is now little liquidity to the downside on the one month time frame. Now, I also wanted to share this three month Bitcoin liquidation heat map because I saw people talk about this. For example, at about $50,000, we have 
five billion dollars worth of liquidity just sitting there though in my humble opinion i think it is very unlikely that we actually reach this price level unless there are some really insane bearish catalysts and another thing i wanted to note about that is just because there's a lot of liquidity here doesn't mean that we actually have to reach that price level like we don't don't have to take out that liquidity for example if we zoom out to the one year bitcoin liquidation heat map you can see about 15 and a half billion dollars worth of liquidity at about 25,000 US dollars. But in my opinion, I think it is very, very unlikely that we actually ever see this price level again in the price of Bitcoin. So just because there's a lot of liquidity here doesn't mean that the price has to reach that price level. And even if you zoom out on this large time frame, this pocket of liquidity at 50,000 is barely even visible. So that is just something that I wanted to note here because I saw people talk about this. As for the Bitcoin ETF inflows for today, unfortunately, there is no data for this yet uh, because it is still Monday. So tomorrow we will get Monday's data. So for now, there isn't much to talk about for the Bitcoin ETF flow tables. I did see a tweet of someone saying that Grayscale sent about $260 million worth of Bitcoin to the Coinbase exchange. And as soon as I read that tweet, I opened up a short position on 40X leverage. Uh, which ended up netting me about a 60% gain here. Either way, I don't want to make any conclusions about this just yet. I'm just going to wait for tomorrow's data to make sure that it was actually accurate and it wasn't just some fake news, basically. And then update you guys in tomorrow's video. Now taking a look at Ethereum on the daily time frame, we got rejected from the 786 Fibonacci level. And then as soon as we lost the 618 Fibonacci level right here, well, we started trading down to the downside very quickly. And as soon as we touched the 0.5 Fibonacci level, we actually got a little bit of a bounce there. So right now it seems like we're kind of just chopping around between these two Fibonacci levels. And to get some more insight on this, we need to look at the short-term support and resistance levels. So in the short term for Ethereum, we found some support at the 0.5 Fib level, like I said, and then we got rejected from this exact level of resistance that I have been talking about for quite a while here, actually. And then we got rejected from this exact level of resistance that I drew out for you guys in yesterday's video. So in a way that is good to see. Either way, right now we're getting rejected from that. So it seems like it's pretty likely that we at least reach back down to this 3000 down to 2850 level. However, in the short term, if we do just find some support here and start trading back to the upside, then the next level of resistance we need to break is from about 3150 all the way up to 3250. And then above that, the next level of resistance is of course the 618 Fibonacci level at about 3330. And of course, there was some massive news for Ethereum today because the ETH ETF actually got approved in Hong Kong. And it is really crazy to me that the ETH ETFs actually already got approved. I did not expect it to be this quickly. So now this is very interesting to see what this means for the ETH ETFs in the United States. Either way, I think long term, this is very bullish for the price of Ethereum. But of course, we can't know what will happen in the short term here. Now taking a look at Solana on the daily time frame, you can see that we got rejected from the 786 Fibonacci level right here. And then once we traded down quickly to the downside, we lost the 618 Fibonacci level. And as soon as that happened, we basically instantly traded down back to this 0.5 Fib level where we are now finding some support. But in the case that we do lose this Fibonacci level, then the next Fibonacci level below that is all the way down at 105. So that would be a pretty significant move to the downside. However, there are, of course, levels of support in between there. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. Now, taking a look at the short term for Solana, it looks like we are right now getting rejected and are potentially losing this level of support. However, there's still an hour and 35 minutes left on this candle. So I don't want to make that assumption just yet because the candle close hasn't been confirmed. For example, it could just be the case that it trades back in this level of support again before the four hour candle close. And if that happens, then it could just be a bounce back to the upside in this level of support. Either way, if we do lose this level from about 150 down to $140, well, then the next level below that is from about 133 down to 125. And in the case that we do lose that level below it, well, then we will be reaching the Fibonacci level that I talked about because the level of support below that is from about 114 
down to $100. But that's about it for the bearish scenarios. In the case that we do trade back to the upside, the next level that you need to look out for is from about 166 all the way up to $172. So that would be a pretty significant move to the upside in the case that we do just find some support right now and then trade back to the upside. If you're interested in daily crypto content, then do make sure to subscribe to this channel with notifications on. I upload a new video every single day. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next one.